Oh man, I'm really excited about this one. We're gonna talk about how to paint two simple skies, okay? That way you have more tools to attack your own landscape when you set off on your own painting adventures. For my canvas, I already added a layer of light gray gesso, divided in half for our two landscape skies that we're gonna do. Then I put a thin coat of liquid white on top of each. Now we can talk about application to your paint brush. Most skies out there you're gonna see are blue. So we're gonna use phthalo blue, but feel free to make whatever color sky you want. It's your landscape. When it comes to applying paint to your paint brush, you wanna make sure you have an even application. That allows you to start on the right foot. Take your one or two inch brush, whatever you feel most comfortable with, and pull down your paint so it's evenly distributed across your paint brush. I like to use both sides of the brush, turn it over back and forth, and then I like to tap it into my mixing palette, letting me know I have an even application across my paint brush. Now we can start to apply some color to the canvas. Take your paint brush that's loaded up with paint and start in the corners. Do some X strokes here first. Then connect the two corners across the top by going either left to right or right to left, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Here is where you want to apply the most pressure off the paint brush. Don't worry about the application, we're just grounding the canvas right now. We'll come back and fix it in just a moment. Then, as you have the X strokes going back and forth in whatever direction you like, you slowly want to work from the top down towards your horizon line but don't take all the color down with you. It's okay to have gaps of white. When you have all the color that you want applied in your sky, now we can take a clean two inch brush and work from the top of the canvas down towards our horizon line by doing long X strokes all the way from the canvas. Like again, work from left to right or right to left, whatever is most comfortable for you and really work that color into the canvas. This is gonna make your sky be velvet smooth. And as you work the color from the top of the canvas down to the bottom, you're naturally gonna mix with that liquid white base coat underneath, creating a beautiful gradient all the way through the sky. And it's gonna look awesome. Now, just to reiterate, make sure you don't pull all that color down to the horizon line. You wanna have a shift in tones in your color here. That's gonna create that beautiful and awesome gradient. You want it to go from, uh, uh, let's just say a mild blue down to a very light blue and then even down to white. This is gonna make it look more natural. Plus it's gonna help you for when you have to build layers later on in your landscape. Now congrats, in just literally a few moments you created a basic blue sky. Now you can enhance this. I like to focus the eye generally in the center or near the center of the painting. So that way it gravitates focus in a certain location I want the viewer's eye to go. And to do this, we can use an easy trick called a vignette. What you can do is take that same blue color or a slightly darker blue color, perhaps something like a Prussian blue, and you can add just a little of that color into the top corners of your sky. That's gonna darken the sky in the top left and right corner there and start to pull the focus more towards the center. It's a natural trick that's very effective if you really wanna direct the viewer's eye in a certain location of your painting. All you need to do is just put in some cross strokes of some colors in that corner, then use your clean two inch brush and work those corners down towards the horizon line again. And it's that simple. Now you have a more moody and stylized sky that's going to accentuate a focal point in your painting. Now, what if you wanted to add color in your sky? That's a great question. You may have noticed I left a lot of white in my example painting here for that very reason. Now, when it comes to adding colors into your sky, you actually want to do that first, or I at least recommend doing it first if you're a beginner. And here's why. Blue is one of the strongest colors in painting of any medium. It will overtake everything, which is why I recommend you start with your yellows, your reds, your oranges, your purples, whatever color you wanna put in your sky first and put it wherever the light source is coming from. Let's just make it right in the center as if our sun is setting. Here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of red when it hits that white base coat underneath. It's gonna turn into a beautiful baby pink. And I'm just gonna cascade that out from the center. And I'm gonna let this blend in to my blue ever so slightly to where the light blue of the white mix underneath is gonna combine with the red with the white mix underneath, creating a beautiful transition gradient. Now I'm doing this backwards, but that's just because it's easier for YouTube and me to record this. But I would recommend you would put in your color first, then start forming your blue around it with that vignette effect. 
that's gonna make it way more effective and yes, easier on you. Now when I have all my color grounded in, just like the blue we talked about before, I'm gonna do some longer strokes with a clean two inch brush and blend that color in to where it needs to be. Now where it meets the other colors, or in this example where my red meets my blue, I'm gonna re-clean my paintbrush because I want it to be really, really clean. So that way, when I paint on top of these sections of where it meets, it's gonna have a beautiful transition. Most painters will make a mistake and use a dirty brush here because they're rushing. Don't do that. Take time, clean off your brush, and really work on those transitional points. It's gonna really add to that vivid look. It's gonna give you more of a stylized painting, or depending on the colors, it can even give you a more moody feel that's gonna resonate with the viewer. Now that we got all of our colors and gradients and sky established, we just need to make it uniform. Really, really clean off your two inch brush here and make sure it's perfectly clean, can't stress that enough, and start from your color side. So your horizon side that has that pink color there, and we're gonna go back and forth, left to right or right to left, again, what's ever easiest for you, and go completely off this canvas, left to right, back and forth, and work your way up the canvas with an extremely light touch. This is only to even out your brush strokes. We're not trying to blend anything, so you just need a feather touch here. When you've gone across your entire section of your sky, congratulations, you just made a simple sky that's gonna look fabulous. Now I know that seems like a lot of steps, but literally you can drop in a sky within just a few minutes, all right? Now if I could give you one personal piece of advice, don't think about it too much when creating a sky. When you look outside, you're gonna see that there are different fluctuations of colors of light and dark with all the contrast in some spots that are blown out and some spots that are more saturated with color. That's what makes a painting beautiful. Have a little fun and scratch some colors here and there. The more loose, sometimes the more rewarding it is. So now you're ready to drop in some clouds, which you can check out the video in the top right corner that shows you how to paint clouds perfectly if you're a beginner. Highly recommend it. In that video, we address a common concern for when you drop in clouds on top of blue paint, you may be picking up the undercoat underneath, contaminating your clouds, making them dull and dingy, which I know you don't want because I constantly get that comment in my YouTube channel. And what I recommend is you can also think about when you build your sky, take into consideration where your clouds are going to be, which is how we're gonna paint our next landscape sky. Wild cutting in here real quick. Hope you're enjoying the video, but I wanna take a moment just to promote a little product that I made for beginner painters out there. And that is how to get started with oil painting supplies. I made a small and easy kit that you can download that goes over all the supplies you need that'll be budget friendly to get you started off on the right foot. This kit will save you hundreds of hours and a bunch of money. I recommend you download it today because trust me, you can't go wrong with anything from me. Now, back to our video. We're gonna flip over the canvas here and we're gonna put just an outer edge to illustrate for you on the YouTube video here where my clouds are going to go. Now, I don't recommend doing this because it's not really gonna help you, it's just to illustrate a point for you. Now, we can just grind in or ground in our blue color around the section of our clouds, leaving that white space with a nice gap so that way we can apply clouds there later. Now, you can put color in this painting if you want. For a simple example, I'm just gonna stick with phthalo blue here, okay? I'm gonna work with a one inch brush, a fan brush, and a filbert brush at times. And I'm just gonna start at the top of my canvas with that phthalo blue and start working down to my horizon line. Now, the only difference here is I'm gonna go around where I think clouds should form, leaving that white gap. And the reason I use my fan brush or filbert brush is just so I have more control of where I wanna be. Once I've established my color, yeah, I go back with a one or a two inch brush or even sometimes a fan brush that is clean and start blending in my colors. At this moment, you can add a vignette effect if you so choose, which I'm going to do because I like a vignette. Now that I have all this open space of white gaps where I'm gonna put my clouds, I'm gonna take a blue shop towel and grind off that liquid white base underneath, exposing more of the toothing of the canvas. So that way when I put my paint on top, it's gonna stick and it's gonna make it easier for me to fluff my clouds. 
Now there's no real secret to this second method. I only really suggest it if you one struggle with that cross contamination or picking up that base coat of color underneath, or you really want to build a lot of expressive clouds in your painting because you're gonna have drier layers connecting with the canvas, making it easier to build different highlights, different saturation values, different contrast values, or whatever you want. Or if you just wanna add a bunch of texture, this is a fantastic way to do it. And as you can see here, you do get some fantastic results. Skies are one of the funnest things to paint because you're allowed to be free and loose and be as expressive as you want. Like I said, it's your environment. The best part about painting a sky is you can actually just paint minimalistic or simplistic skies and they'll look fantastic on your wall. And if you wanna learn how to do that, I'm gonna put a couple of videos over to my side that run you through that process and hold your hand and show you some awesome tutorials. Check those out and as always, I'll catch you later. Take care and of course, peace.